uh, sent out an email. I have a, I have an. Uh, Welcome to my channel. My name is Kelly, also known as Raw Rome Kids. You can find me on YouTube and Instagram. Welcome, and welcome back if you are returning. Um, I thought today we would talk about being a test knitter. Um, if you have watched some of my previous videos, particularly the um, designer stories ones, um, I have two of those uh, and they mention test knitting and um, kind of being let down by test knitters. So I thought I would like come on and just chat about what it takes to be a good test knitter. Um, I'll tell you this first, today I'm wearing my um, Crown Tea Hawthorne and I cannot remember who this is by because I knitted it over a year ago now. It is in... Um, Hedgerow fibres, I think. It's like a silky base. I, I just cannot remember because it's ages ago since I knitted it and everything. But um, I'll put all the info on the screen. So, um, yes, let's start with what is an actual test knit um, in case you do not know. So a test knit is when a designer will select a few people to knit like the first draft of a new pattern so before the pattern's been released they will have written out the pattern to the best of what they think they think that's ready to go but then they send it out to a select amount of people um to knit it and make sure that it's ready to go so currently as time of recording i have a sock in test um so i wrote out that pattern excuse my dog I wrote out that pattern um, and I thought it was ready to go um, and then I uh, sent out an email, I have a, I have an, uh, I have a mailing list where people can sign up and be on my call for test knits so whenever I've got a new test knit coming out they will receive an email telling them that that test knit is coming out and then they can apply to that test knit if they like the look of the pattern. Um, they usually only get like a draft photo. Uh, they don't get the official photos because they probably haven't been taken at that point. Um, and they get a copy of the pattern that I think is ready. Most of the time I'm very incorrect. But what you one thing you need to realise is that when you're writing a pattern you tend to get pattern blindness. You will write it and write it and write it and you're in that pattern for hours, if not days. Um, and you kind of, you become blind to certain aspects of the pattern. You can't see that there's full stops missing here and there. You can't see the spelling mistakes. You can't see that there's abbreviations missing. Um, there's just a lot that happens and you just, you you just get blind to it. So, um, as a small designer, if I'm releasing a top, I will get that tech edited. Um, but tech editing, which is a different part of the... A tech editor doesn't knit the item, but they check through the pattern for any errors, uh, mathematical or grammar errors. And just they look through and make sure that it's written in a way that people can understand. That's like the basics of what a tech editor does. So when I am releasing a top pattern, I will send it to a tech editor and get that checked. Now I'll do that before it goes into testing. However, tech editing costs money. And I am a small designer. I don't make a lot from patterns. So... When I'm releasing something like a sock, I don't get that tech edited. I just put it through testing and I just keep giving myself breaks and then go back through the pattern a, a week later just to try and remove the pattern blindness and go through it again. Um, 
it's not ideal. I would love to be able to have them all tech edited, but tech editing will it eats away at a lot of the profit that I make from a pattern. And I'm doing this for profit. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, um, it's not ideal, but this is how it works. So my latest sock pattern, I thought it was ready. I sent it out. It had major errors in it. Um, the charts didn't match up to, um, the chart didn't match up to itself basically. So in, in the sock, there was the leg bit and then, and that chart was fine, but then the instep chart didn't tally up to the leg chart and only on some sizes and things like this. It was a whole thing. It needed fixing. Um, this is the kind of thing that I, I looked at that pattern and was like, yeah, that's ready to go. That's the kind of thing that a, te a test knitter might come across. So test knitting, the designer sends out the draft pattern thinking that it's ready to go and the test knitter will knit it to make sure they're getting a sock, for example, not a teapot cosy. They're getting something that looks like the picture. And they also kind of look for missing abbreviations if they want to, um, full stops missing if they want to. They can do a kind of little bit of tech editing if they want to. So my tips for test knitting. When you are accepted for a test knit, you've applied for a test knit, you know you can meet the deadline, you know you've either got the yarn or you know what yarn you want to get. Um, I don't stipulate a particular yarn to use. Some, te some designers say that you have to use indie, indie yarn or you have to use the yarn that the item was designed in. I'm not bothered as long as you get engaged. So you've accepted the test net, you've been accepted by the designer and it's time to join she's opened it up or he's opened it up and it, and it's time to start. Now, all designers run their tests differently. I personally run mine in Discord. Um, some run them in Slack. I used to run them in Slack, but not anymore. Um, some run them just through email, which I also used to do. Some run them in Ravelry. Some run them in Instagram. Like there's lots of different places where tests are run. Um, if it's not run off over email and it is run on a platform, then as a test knitter, get in that platform as soon as you can. Like join in a timely manner. Don't leave it days because the designer thinks you've changed your mind. And the designer also wants to get started. You have a deadline to meet as a test knitter. And if you're leaving it a few days um, before you're even joining and starting, you're making the designer quite antsy. So get yourself in the test knit, even if you know you can't start straight away because you're waiting for yarn. Just get in the test knit, get yourself acclimatised to the platform that it's on, even if you've used it before. There might be new testers in there that you've never worked with before. Get yourself in there and um, just like, you don't have to, but engaging with the other testers and joining in, it's kind of like a mini, mini knit along. It's like, um, it is like a, there's a community there and it's there for you to join. And if you join it and enjoy it, that's great. Um, so yeah, get yourself in the test in a timely manner. Um, and then acknowledge the test. Let the designer know that you're there. Don't just join the platform and then just stay quiet because the designer doesn't actually know that you're really there. So especially with some of the platforms. So just even if it's just hello, or sharing the yarn you're going to use or anything like that. Just make it known that you are there and you are ready to begin. And that takes a little bit of the stress, stress away from the designer. Um, as a designer, when you release a test knit, it can, not all the time, it depends on the pattern, but sometimes it can be really nerve wracking and 
um, you are on edge and you are stressed already. So just as a test knitter, just help him with that in the little ways, like just letting that designer know that you're there is a, a smidgen of the stress wiped off, trust me. Um, while you're testing, keep in touch. Now I'm not saying you've got to be there every day going, hi, I've done this much today or any of that. But a weekly or a fortnightly check-in, that's every two weeks, um, is just a good thing to do. Tests are normally, I will run a sock test is like three weeks for one sock. So, um, and then I'll do like a T for around about eight weeks. So you're in there a fair amount of time. And um, if you're just not saying anything through that entire time, the designer is thinking you've gone. You're not even there anymore. Especially when um, I have tagged knitters before and um, said, are you still here? And they just don't reply and it's like, Ooh, it's very stressful. You feel like you're getting ghosted and it's not good. And then if they do pop up a bit later, great, but it's still a bit like, where have you been? Like, why haven't you answered me? You kind of need to be in there. You also need to be in there because if any errors are coming up, you're aware of the errors and you're altering them on your pattern so that you know that there's errors and you're not going to either knit that error and not realise or report the error again. So yeah, keep in touch. Just pop up every now and again and go, I'm still here, this is how much I've done. Or if you haven't, um, even if you haven't got a photo, just say, I've worked the leg or whatever. Um, now, a very important one is to work the pattern as if you've never worked that item before so if this is a sock test for example work that pattern like you've never knitted a sock in your life um because it's really easy to be like oh we're at the heel flap now and just work the heel flap as you would and then go right we're at the we're at the gusset no 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 just doing it because that's probably how we do a sock pattern that we've bought because we've worked that many socks before, for example. But that's not helping the designer. You need to work that pattern like you've never worked that item before so that you can read it properly, take in everything that's being said and know if that's like a confusing, confusing way it's being written or a good way it's being written or because feedback works both ways if you're feeding back all the negative that's fine but it's also nice to give some positive to, to the designer as well so that they actually feel good because it can be quite grueling as a designer when there's a lot of errors in a pattern it makes you feel like you've failed and um, just to like say, oh, this is absolutely beautiful or whatever, or I love the way you wrote that, that explained it so much better. Just like keeps the designer on an even keel. <laughs> Not saying that we need to be, um, what's it called? Is it modified? Is that the word I'm looking for? Not, we don't need pats on the back and things like that. I don't mean it like that. But when there's a lot of errors, it can be quite, um, upsetting to the designer. The designer doesn't want to give you a pattern that's full of errors. <laughs> they don't. So always be nice and polite about it and just say, oh look, this isn't working. Like I'm not sure what's happening or this is what I think is happening. That's always helpful. Um, and then the designer will look at it and get back. So yeah. Um, but definitely work through a pattern like you have never worked with an item before. That is the number one thing I would say about test knitting is 
to do that like if you're knitting it just blindly then you're really not helping just because you've got the sock at the end it doesn't mean that you followed the pattern or not just the sock I'm just saying that because that's what's my current test knit but like if you've worked a tee and you've worked a lot of tees before and then you just knit it like like oh yeah I know what she means but you're not actually following the pattern you must follow the pattern so that the designer knows that it makes sense and it gets you what you're supposed to get at the end um if you do find any errors you can if they're just little errors like full stops missing or something you can always make a note of them and then give the designer a list at the end or just um if you make a note on a printed version of the pattern you could photograph that pattern and just send it to the like upload it for the designer however you work in the, the test um that's always a good one or if you want to just tell them every single time you come across one if there's a lot or whatever you can um it's whatever you need to do but if you find an error report the error don't just go oh well she won't care about that she she or he will care about that they want the pattern to be perfect so if you report all errors fantastic also you can also give your um, opinion on the way things are worded errors as a designer should be fixed opinions are not always changed so like um if you say well i think this should be worded like this the designer should take that on board and be like thank you um, I'll look into that but they don't have to always do what you want them to do um, because each designer has their own voice and sometimes it's a tech editor can do this as well they will give like an opinion on how something should be worded but if the designer feels like that's not in their voice then they don't need to do that they can keep it their own way they might alter it slightly so that it's kind of what you've said but it's still also in their own voice if that makes sense but don't expect them to change every single thing that you say but errors should be changed um so any problems that you have during the testing process you should report and i mean any problem so I'm not just talking about pattern problems, I'm talking about if you are running out of time, if you have got an illness and you're not knitting as much, if, if I don't know, if something's cropped up and you've got to go away, whatever, you, you need to tell the designer what is going on, if it's going to affect the item that you're making for them. Purely because if it's early doors, it's early in the test they could replace you and I don't mean they'll kick you off the test but they I mean some designers might I'm, I'm only speaking for myself I wouldn't kick anybody off a test unless it was extreme measures um, however if someone told me that they it was like three four days in and they were like I'm not gonna be able to do this I'm going into hospital or something or um, I'm, I might not be able to meet the deadline or something like that then I would put somebody on that size and then they can just still knit it but knit along and I've still got somebody else doing that size if that makes sense just be aware that the designer has got people testing because they need it testing and they need a finished result so and when when a lot of people don't complete or a lot of people ghost this happens a lot it means that the designer hasn't got a finished test result and therefore might have to delay the release date and might have to open it up for testing again and there's a whole thing and the, de the designer has already worked really really hard on the pattern even if it's full of mistakes, trust me, the designer has worked really hard on the pattern. And when when you get a test that fails, basically, it's yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty disheartening. There's a couple of don'ts that I have, and there's not many, but 
the first one I would say is don't try to fix the mistakes yourself. Just if you come across a mistake in a pattern, tell a designer and explain what's happened. Now, if you can photograph it and show them, that's good. If you can try and explain in depth, that's good. But yeah, don't just think, oh, maybe it's me and fix it because maybe it's not you, maybe it's the pattern. If it is you, it happens. It really does happen. The same as when we're in any pattern, we can miss bits and make mistakes. It happens in testing too. Do not be embarrassed about that, it happens. But don't just assume that it's your fault and fix it because there's a massive possibility that it's not your fault and it's the pattern and the designer has to fix that. Otherwise, everybody who buys the pattern is gonna get that problem and then they're not gonna be very happy. <laughs> My biggest, biggest, biggest bugbear with testing is when I get ghosted. So ghosting, for those of you who, who might not know what ghosting means, it just means the person disappears, they don't answer anything, they just, they just go. They just take the pattern and go. And it happens so much, so, so much. Um, and it's infuriating. All I ever ask for is just to be informed. If you can't finish the test, if something's come up and you just can't finish, okay, but just let me know. Like, I'm not gonna be overjoyed about you not being able to finish it, and I'm never gonna reprimand you. You're on a test where you're doing it for me without payment, you're using your own yarn, you are, um, knitting this thing that I've asked you to knit and it's probably going to have a few errors in and you might have to frog it a few times because of me. So because of that, I'm never ever going to reprimand anybody for not finishing. However, um, ghosting me is an immediate way of getting yourself off my testing list. I cannot tolerate ghosting because there's no need for it. You can just tell me and that I will accept whatever happens and we will move on. So the way I run tests, okay, I have my test in this. Whenever I run a test, they go into a little, I have like a little database thing and I keep an eye on what that tester is doing. So like, don't be paranoid, <laughs> but I am watching you for how you're getting on and what you're doing. Um, and I will make notes. When I do another test and that same tester replies again, I can look at my notes and, and think, well, did they complete? And did they do a good job? And yes, 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 then they get on the test. If it's like, if they didn't complete, and they, but they told me that they couldn't complete, then you might get another chance. If you didn't complete, didn't tell me, you just disappeared, you're off my list. Like there's no coming back from that, because there's no reason for that. Please, please, please. Do not ghost your designers. Just be nice about stuff. Realise that you might have to frog. Realise that you might be not just knitting the sock, the top, the glove, whatever it is, the hat. Realise that you may have to restart a couple of times while the designer takes out major kinks. It's a massive possibility and it is part of the testing process. As a designer, every time that happens, I feel horrendous. I hate it. Um, I do not like having to make people frog stuff. You do have to expect that possibility as a test knitter. Just saying. <laughs> I think overall test knitting is an enjoyable experience if that's what you would like to do. Um, I think it can expand your skills, I think it can give you that little sense of community. I think a lot of people feel like they're helping as well because they are, they are helping, they're really helping the designer so like and I think a lot of people get that. So my top three tips of, of um, how to be a good tester. Read the pattern like you've never knitted that item before and work through it that way. Do not ghost, expect errors and expect to frog sometimes.
not all the time, just sometimes. And I think I've done this a little bit sporadic, so it might be quite choppy in the edit. Um, while I put them in the proper order. <laughs> right, thank you for watching. Let me know below of any experiences you've had during test knitting, or as a designer, if you, if you are a designer. Let me know what your biggest bugbear is through testing, and uh, give the video a thumbs up if you could, please. It's very, very helpful. And, uh, and if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and come back and see me again. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.